talked about the big five factor of personality, which has been the biggest model of personality in the last 40 years. But what has come after? Well, there's two theories of personality led by two Canadian teams that have actually made a significant impact on the theories of personality. The first one is the theory of the dark triad. Although the big five factor of personality covered a lot of ground, it didn't really talk about some negative things and some negative dark corners of our personality. And so Del Paulhouse from University of British Columbia has led the way in terms of investigating this darker side of our personality. And so the dark triad, or sometimes called the dark tetrad with four components, talks about the components more associated with Eisnick's theory of psychoticism. And so these are again traits, not types. Anyone can be high, low, or medium on them, but there was considered to be three main parts of the dark triad. The first was narcissism. Narcissism refers to someone who has a really inflated sense of self. They really think they're very important. They think they're better than other people. They want praise and entitlement at all things. They think they're a VIP. They think they're special. And they think that everyone needs to acknowledge them and give them everything they want. Someone who's extremely high in narcissism doesn't respond well to criticism. They either completely ignore it or it enrages them. And someone who's high in narcissism can't even understand how to be better because they already think they are best. And so narcissism is very toxic at high levels. Another factor here is Machiavellianism. This is named after the philosopher Machiavelli, who really encouraged inauthentic manipulation and competitiveness in other people. And so Machiavellianism is the idea of sort of calculative manipulation for self-preservation. This is the idea that someone may be very inauthentic and may lie to other people's faces just to use them and not for other things. So the idea is someone might be invested in a relationship not because they want the relationship, but because they use it for utilitarian purposes. So someone who's not wearing their heart on their sleeves, someone who is more cold and calculating towards others, not necessarily hurting them at this point, but more so using them for their own gain rather than using them for the mutual benefits of a relationship. And then the third component is psychopathy. And psychopathy is really a lack of empathy towards others, not feeling remorse, not feeling guilt, not feeling sad or sympathy for anybody. And so because this high psychopathy is associated with cruelty, hurting animals, hurting other people, and not flinching about it and not feeling any pain associated with it. We could certainly see how these things might appear individually in a person. You might have someone who is very empathetic, even though they're Machiavellian, they manipulate and they feel bad they're manipulating. Or you might have someone who's very narcissistic, but feels bad about that, they could be high in empathy. Or you might have someone who's cruel and lacks empathy, but they don't know how to manipulate and they actually don't feel good about themselves. However, the dark triad is most threatening when somebody is high in all three of these. If you imagine a person who is high in psychopathy, Machiavellianism, and narcissism, that's going to be a person who is really going to cause a lot of pain for those around them. They may be a very physically aggressive some person, somebody who is a serial killer, or they may be someone who's a white collar criminal, someone who does a Ponzi scheme and hurts others financially and has no remorse about it. They could be a top CEO or a police chief who really thrives in their power seat and really enjoys hurting those below them. So the dark triad is a scientific inquiry into all of this negative stuff. And a lot of Canadian researchers who are looking at the dark triad tend to look at the dark triad when it comes to things like romantic relationships, how they tend to use serial relationships or short-term relationships to gain from them and having no remorse over hurting their partner. So the dark triad takes personality to a really negative space. And it adds on to the big five factors because these attributes were not really assessed in the main big five factors. However, one last theory of personality we're going to cover does account for the big five factors as well as the dark triad, and that is the Hexaco theory. So the Hexaco theory was founded by Kibom Lee and Michael Ashton at Brock University, though Kibom Lee is now at my current institute. I have the pleasure of having him as a colleague, and it's really cool to be working along someone who has the leading personality theory in the world. And so Hexaco was founded by looking at the lexical approach of personality traits, much like Cattell's theory and much like the big five factor trait theory, only including language for personality in non-English languages. 
Lee and Ashton were able to find that there was more words that really focused on a sixth attribute. And that sixth attribute or that sixth personality trait is called the H factor. It stands for honesty hyphen humility. And honesty humility seems to be the opposite of the dark triad. People high in the H factor tend to be very sincere. They really focus on fairness. They're into greed avoidance. That is, they don't want to hoard things on the stock market, let's say. And they're really modest. They're not narcissistic. They're not prideful. They are not ashamed either, but they have a good level of humility or modesty about their success. And so the Hexaco has been shown to be very scientifically supported. It's even more robust than the big five factors and is quickly picking up steam. Some of the problems with working with the Hexaco so far is a lot of English speakers have a hard time understanding how the H, humility, honesty, might be different from A, agreeableness, because agreeableness was tied to warmth and, and caring about relationships, and H almost seems to do the same. But you can picture someone who's high in agreeableness who's still very authentic. They're the person that comes to your parties who seems very nice, but they're very fakely nice. Versus you could have someone who's high in honesty, but low in agreeableness. And that would be someone who seems like a grump and they're very blunt and they put themselves first, but they have a lot of integrity. And when push comes to shove, they're there and they have your back. So we could see those as two different spectrums. So although Hexaco is the latest theory of personality to really pick up steam internationally, it seems to be pretty strong and more and more research is being done about it every year. Now we've gone over lots of theories of personality from way back Freudian and Jungian theories to the Myers-Briggs based on a magazine quiz to early scientific theories like Eisnick and Gattel to the big five factors and two theories after the big five factors, the dark triad and the Hexaco. You've now reached the end of Intro Psychology Unit 11. Well done.